Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. We are just days away from the launch of Sentinel 1A, the first in a fleet of satellites being developed for Europe's Copernicus program. Sentinel 1 will be a two satellite mission carrying an advanced radar instrument to provide an all weather, day and night supply of imagery of Earth's surfaces. These images will be used for a variety of applications, such as monitoring sea ice extent, surveillance of marine environment, monitoring land surface for motion risks, and mapping to support emergency relief efforts. With me in the studio today to tell us more is Josef Aschbacher, Head of Program Planning and Coordination Service here at ESA. Thank you for being with us today, Josef. Thank you, Kelsey. Glad to be here. Josef, can you begin by telling us, especially for our audience who don't know about the program, what is the Copernicus program? Copernicus is, um, is a very ambitious uh, program of the European Union together with ESA. It's in fact the most ambitious Earth observation program ever conceived uh, worldwide. Nothing else exists in any other part in the world. Uh, it is uh, one of Europe's uh, flagship programs. There are two. Uh, one is Galileo, one is uh, Copernicus. And Copernicus uh, is, I would say, the best example of uh, cooperation between the European Union and the European Space Agency, each, each of them uh, showing their strength uh, in working together. The European Union having a very strong policy uh, drive and uh, policy background, uh, the European Space Agency, a technical body, uh, providing its, its expertise to uh, build satellites and an Earth observation system. Can you tell me a bit more about ESA's role in the program? Uh, ESA's role in uh, Copernicus is, uh, uh, there are a few roles ESA has. The first role is that ESA is coordinating the overall uh, space component, uh, which means uh, the satellite and the ground segment aspects, but also access to data from member states. Uh, the second role is that uh, ESA develops uh, the new satellites, uh, the new generation of uh, Sentinels and the, new, the first uh, satellites uh, uh, which are being built, uh, blasting the ground segment that is uh, going with it. Uh, ESA also procures recurrent units, so the second, third, fourth uh, satellite of the same kind. Uh, and ESA uh, buys data from uh, member state missions or missions of private uh, providers, which are also used for Copernicus. And, of course, uh, one important function is that ESA also operates some of the satellites which, uh, which are being operated under Copernicus, in particular Sentinels 1, 2 and the land part of Sentinel 3. Okay, now the first, uh, the first half of Sentinel-1, Sentinel-1A, is going to be launched in just a few days and it's going to carry a radar. Can you tell me a bit about what this radar imagery is going to be used for? Uh, radar is very uh, particular because it allows uh, images uh, day and night. Uh, it is uh, independent of weather, so you can really see through clouds, uh, through rain, and uh, you can uh, get an image at almost any time when the satellite is uh, flying over the area. Um, it uh, provides a number of different applications or serves data for uh, many applications. Uh, one of the key ones are uh, sea ice monitoring, oil spill uh, monitoring, land deformation. For example, uh, there's an application that allows to measure subsidence. That means if uh, a building, for example, is sinking in uh, by a few millimeters, you can monitor this from space, from uh, 700 kilometers uh, in the orbit, which is quite uh, amazing, that you can uh, detect such uh, small uh, scales of uh, changes. But also you can uh, measure uh, sea ice, uh, for example, for ship uh, trafficking, or land uh, cover changes, uh, agriculture, rice monitoring and the likes. Mm -hmm. Now some of these applications require pretty quick dissemination of data. How is this possible? Uh, this is possible because, okay, first of all, the access to data uh, depends on two main factors. One is uh, how many times does uh, the satellite fly over a certain area? Uh, as uh, said before, the satellite uh, constellation has two satellites. Uh, in, uh, with two satellites you get an, uh, the, the same spot on the Earth at least every six days at the equator and even more frequently in mid-latitudes, so in uh, mid-latitudes about every three days on average, which is very frequent and in northern latitudes even more frequent. So this is already an improvement by a factor of at least six compared to Envisat, which was our workhorse uh, up to uh, two years ago. 
Uh, the second point is uh, how long does it take uh, for the data after acquisition to get to the user. And there we have a, a very uh, rapid uh, data access and dissemination system put in place, uh, which allows that near real-time data can get to the user within three hours uh, after acquisition, which is very fast. And in some cases, uh, for specialized users like uh, mar uh, maritime uh, safety agency uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Lisbon, uh, they require for oil slick monitoring storing data within a couple of minutes. So we have a system put in place that 10 minutes after the uh, image is taken of uh, an oil spill, for example, the images can be provided to the user and then to the Coast Guards to really take action. And this is, uh, I would say, an enormous uh, effort and uh, it is really, uh, I would say, uh, a big uh, uh, progress uh, compared to previous missions we had. Okay, well, Yosef, thank you so much for joining us today. We're looking forward to the launch of Sentinel-1A. Thank you. Keep your fingers crossed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And to our viewers, remember that you can follow the launch of Sentinel-1A by going to www.esa.int slash ESA Live. But for more information on the Sentinel-1 mission, you can visit www.esa.int slash Sentinel-1. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.